Hello students, today in this video we will discuss a modulation technique called frequency modulation or FM. We know that modulation is the process of adding a message signal into a high frequency carrier and frequency modulation or FM is one of the modulation techniques. Here in FM we will add our message signal into the frequency of the carrier. We know that in the case of amplitude modulation or AM, we add the message signal in the amplitude of the high frequency carrier. But in the case of FM, we add the message signal into the frequency of the carrier. So, how the amplitude of the message is varying accordingly the frequency of the carrier varies so that we get an FM signal. Here we see an FM signal and this is a modified carrier. The carrier is modified in such a way that its frequency varies continuously according to the variation of the amplitude of the message signal. Now you can see here that when the amplitude of the message increases, the frequency of the carrier increases from its original value. So the carrier has an original frequency and uh, the frequency of the signal increases from that value when the amplitude of the message increases. And similarly when the amplitude of the message decreases, we can see here that the frequency of the carrier is decreasing. We see here that the frequency of the carrier is continuously varying according to the variation of the amplitude of the message. Or we can say here that this signal or this FM signal contains this message information in the form of variation of frequency. And here we can also see that the amplitude of the FM signal is constant or it is not at all varying when the amplitude of the message is varying. So the variation in the case of FM signal is in its frequency. And we know that a noise signal, which is an unwanted signal, which will be added to a signal when it is transmitted. So such an unwanted noise signal is usually added to the amplitude of a signal. So when the noise affects a signal, it will be seen in the amplitude of the signal. Or we can say the noise will be added to the amplitude of a signal. So the AM signal is highly susceptible to noise because when a noise comes it is added to the amplitude of that AM signal and we know that our message or information is there in the amplitude of the AM signal. Thus when a noise is added to the amplitude of the AM signal it will modify our message or we will lose the information contained in the AM signal due to noise. But when we consider an FM signal, the message is not in the amplitude of the signal but it is in the frequency. So if a noise is coming and added to the FM signal modifying its amplitude but our information or message is secured as it is kept in the frequency not in the amplitude. So noise effect will be very less in FM compared to AM. This is a big advantage of FM compared to AM. Now we will define the modulation index in the case of FM. It is defined as the ratio of frequency deviation of the carrier to the highest frequency contained in the message. So it is M equals delta F by FM where delta F is the frequency deviation of the FM signal. So what is frequency deviation? Frequency deviation means the highest frequency that appears in an FM signal minus the original carrier frequency. So modulation index is that frequency deviation divided by the highest frequency contained in the message signal. Now what about the instantaneous frequency of an FM signal? It can be written using an equation that the instantaneous frequency F is equal to Fc into 1 plus kvm cos omega mt. Here fc is the original carrier frequency and 
k is a proportionality constant and vm cos omega mt is our message signal so when the message signal changes or its amplitude varies the instantaneous frequency also varies what will be the maximum frequency contained in an fm signal if that frequency is f max we can write it as fc into 1 plus kvm because the maximum value of cos omega mt is 1 so if we put 1 here this equation becomes maximum frequency f maximum is equal to fc into 1 plus kvm now the maximum frequency deviation delta is equal to the maximum frequency contained in the fm signal that is f max minus original carrier frequency fc so that can be written as fc into 1 plus kvm minus fc or if we expand this it can be written as fc plus kvm fc and then minus fc so maximum frequency deviation delta is equal to kvm fc and modulation index m equal to that deviation delta divided by fm so this is the modulation index of an fm signal now we will see the frequency spectrum of a fm signal for an fm signal it has infinite number of side bands on the either side of the carrier so these side bands are separated from the carrier on either side by fm 2fm 3fm 4fm etc so that means the upper frequency side after the carrier fc the first side band will be appearing at the location fc plus fm the second side band will appear at fc plus 2 fm then the next side band will be at fc plus 3 fm like that similarly on the lower frequency side the first side band will be at fc minus fm second side band will be at fc minus 2 fm and so on so we have the side bands in fm on the either side of the carrier frequency fc but even if there are infinite number of side bands in the case of fm all are not equally significant so when we move to the high frequency side bands uh, their power or their amplitude will be very very small so to consider the side bands of an fm we need to count only the significant side bands so the number of significant side bands and hence bandwidth increases with the increase in modulation index so for an fm signal its the number of significant side bands will increase with the increase in modulation index so we have to note that in the case of an fm signal if we increase the modulation index the number of significant side bands will be increasing that will increase the bandwidth of the fm signal also and another important characteristic of fm is that the total transmitter power remains constant and it is independent of the modulation index this is because the amplitude of fm signal is constant we know that uh, there is no variation in the amplitude of an fm signal so the power will be always constant when we transmit an fm signal but we know that in am when modulation index increases the sideband power as well as the total transmitted power will increase so in the case of fm the total transmitted power is independent of the modulation index but the bandwidth requirement will be increasing as modulation index increases we already uh, discussed it when modulation index increases in fm the number of significant side bands will increase and hence the bandwidth requirement will also increase now let us consider the required bandwidth for an fm signal we already said that theoretically fm has infinite number of side bands and thus it needs infinite bandwidth but for calculating the practical bandwidth we need to consider only the significant side bands significant side bands means the side bands having significant power the other side bands which have very less power can be neglected so how many significant side bands need to be considered while calculating the practical bandwidth of an fm signal for that we have a rule 
called Carson's rule. So according to this rule, we need to consider only m plus one number of side bands on either side of the carrier. Here m is the modulation index of fm. So what this rule says is that we have to consider m plus one side bands on the upper frequency side and m plus one side bands on the lower frequency side of the carrier. So how many side bands we have to consider in total? It will be two m plus one, m plus one side bands on the high frequency side and m plus one side bands at the low frequency side. So total number of significant side bands we have to consider is two m plus one. Then what about the bandwidth? It is equal to two m plus one f m. Or if you replace modulation index m by uh, delta by f m, it can be written like this. So finally, we can write this equation: bandwidth is equal to two into maximum frequency deviation plus f m. Now we will make a comparison between a m and f m. So we have here a comparison table. The first parameter is power in side bands. So when we consider the power in side bands in the case of AM, we know that it is very small. Large portion of the total power will be in carrier rather than in side bands in the case of AM. But in the case of FM, the maximum part of the total transmitted power will be in the quad side bands, not in carrier. So that's a advantage in the case of FM. Then what about the total transmitted power? The total transmitted power in the case of AM will be varying with the modulation index. At the same time, the total transmitted power remains constant in the case of FM. Similarly, immunity to noise. What is immunity to noise? Noise immunity means how better the system can avoid noise effects. So when we consider an AM signal. We know that noise will easily affect that signal because our message is carried in amplitude. So noise can easily affect an AM signal. So noise immunity is poor in the case of AM, but at the same time, noise immunity is very large in FM because our message is not in the amplitude of the carrier but in the frequency, and noise cannot affect the frequency of a signal. It can affect only the amplitude. The next parameter is bandwidth. So bandwidth requirement in the case of AM is very small compared to FM, and bandwidth requirement is very large in FM. Once again, the bandwidth requirement in AM is very small compared to FM, and the required bandwidth in FM is very large. Now, what about circuit complexity? When we consider the modulation and demodulation circuits in the case of AM, it is less complicated. Very simple circuits can be used for modulation and demodulation in the case of AM. But comparatively, the modulation and demodulation circuits will be more complex in the case of FM. Now, finally, we will consider the area of reception. Area of reception means the area where The signal can be received from the transmitter. So, in the case of AM, the area of reception is large, and area of reception is small in FM. And this is because uh, the AM carrier frequency is small compared to FM carrier frequency. A high frequency signal will not be spreading much compared to a low frequency signal. So, since the carrier of FM is a high frequency one. It will not spread easily as a low frequency AM signal. The area of reception will be less in the case of FM since the spreading will be less in the case of FM. That's all in this video about FM. So thanks for watching.